Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Terry Thompson and the Zanesville, Ohio zoo tragedy? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, and offer my analysis. Terry Thompson grew up on a farm just east of Zanesville, Ohio. Eventually, he would become an Eagle Scout. He played football in high school. Terry had an interest in airplanes. He would get his pilot's license before he was 16. So he had that before his driver's license. A few years later, Terry was drafted into the Army and served as a door gunner on a Huey helicopter in Vietnam. He had some terrible experiences there, including picking up injured soldiers under fire. Terry really struggled to cope with what happened in Vietnam. He believed that he would burn in the fires of hell because he killed enemy combatants using his M60 machine gun. Terry couldn't understand why he survived, and other soldiers did not. Terry returned from Vietnam, but not to his hometown initially, rather to Columbus, Ohio. He walked 50 miles to his parents' house because he wanted to clear his head. Terry married a woman named Marion Sharp. Marion was a local school teacher. She taught sixth grade. Terry opened up a motorcycle dealership, had a license to sell guns, and raised Dobermans. In 1997, Terry bought a tiger cub at an exotic animal auction. Over the next several years, he would accumulate a number of exotic animals, sports cars, and firearms. As far as the animals, eventually he would accumulate 18 tigers, 17 lions, 8 bears, as well as a few other animals. Terry would often get into trouble in the community. On one occasion, Terry waited for a vandal who had repeatedly broken the windows of his shop. When the man showed up, Terry beat him badly. The man fled, but Terry chased him and continued to beat him. Terry was charged, but never convicted. Terry eventually sold the motorcycle shop and seemed kind of aimless and reckless for a while. He raced boats, he raced cars, he flew a biplane and had a few other planes. He owned a decommissioned fire truck that he would regularly drive around the area until he crashed it. People said that he involved himself in a lot of stunts. He was daring, always going fast. He would occasionally argue with police officers and did not like authority. People were reluctant to complain about him because they were afraid of him. Even still, some people did report his activities. Terry was sentenced to six months of house arrest for animal cruelty in 2005. He was arrested in 2008 by the ATF. They charged him with possession of a machine gun and owning a gun without a serial number. He would eventually plead guilty to the charges after telling a judge he couldn't afford any more legal fees. He went to federal prison in November of 2010. While he was there, Terry's marriage fell apart. He became paranoid. He believed that Marion had churned him into the authorities. Marion had told Terry that when he was released from prison, they would not be living together. In August of 2011, Terry was moved to a halfway house. He was released on September 30, but still had to serve a year of home confinement. He didn't call anybody to pick him up from prison. Instead, he walked to a nearby Walmart, bought a bicycle, and rode almost 50 miles to get to his home. His wife was not there when he arrived. She had left him. Terry was depressed. He felt betrayed by everybody, his wife, the government. Terry couldn't reconnect to the animals. He had forgotten the names of several of his lions. He did not feel at home. He had no hope for the future. One of the last, or possibly the last, interaction Terry would have with anybody was when he told a friend of his that he thought Marion may have cheated on him when he was in prison. He was trying to figure out whether she did or not. Terry suggested he was going to find out for sure, and people would know when he did. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On October 18, 2011, one of Terry's neighbors became alarmed after seeing an African lion on his property. He walked to his barn. He did not run because he was afraid the lion would chase him. He called his mother, 
who in turn called the Thompsons, but she didn't get an answer, so she called 911. The police arrived. They noticed a variety of animals on the loose. They saw a couple of lions, a wolf, a tiger, and a black bear. One police officer shot and killed a wolf. He then responded to another officer requesting help with a lion. As the officer was driving, he saw a black bear. The bear started charging him. He shot the bear once with his 40 caliber Glock 22. The bear dropped to the ground just seven feet from the officer. He then retrieved his rifle and shot a number of other animals. Other officers were also called to the scene. They started shooting the animals as well. As time went on, the authorities realized that most of Terry Thompson's animals were on the loose. The police had dealt before with the occasional animal getting away, like a horse, but they'd never seen anything like this. The police didn't know if the animals had escaped or if somebody had let them loose. After arriving at Terry's house, the police found many of the cages had been cut open and other cages had been left open. Terry's body was found near the barn. A white tiger was eating it. They figured Terry was dead, so they continued shooting the animals, so they didn't attend to Terry at that time. When they returned to Terry's body, the tiger was gone. They found a Ruger 357 Magnum revolver next to Terry's body, as well as bolt cutters. On a nearby driveway, they noticed there were raw chicken bones. Terry had died from one self-inflicted gunshot wound. There was gunshot residue on his hand. The police believed he wanted the animals to eat him, hence the chicken bones. The police eventually calculated that 50 animals had been set free. A nearby zoo sent a capture and recovery team to assist, but 49 of the animals would be shot to death by the police. Only one animal was unaccounted for, a monkey. Some people theorized that perhaps the monkey escaped, but the police believe it was probably eaten by one of the lions or tigers. The only animals that survived were the ones that were not released from Terry's property. The animals that were killed were buried on Terry Thompson's property using a backhoe. Now moving to my analysis. As I mentioned, Terry had brought an end to his own life. An autopsy would later reveal that Terry had severe cardiovascular disease. It's not clear how long he would have survived with that illness or if he knew about it. Terry had postmortem injuries caused by the animals. Most notably, his genitals had been completely removed. That's the first thing the animals went for. Ohio has been criticized for not taking enough measures to restrict the ownership of exotic animals. Perhaps they could use this behavior in a public ad campaign. The postmortem genital removal tactic used by the animals would have to discourage even the most ardent supporter of exotic pet ownership. What happened in the case of Terry Thompson? What motivated him to cause the death of his animals? At one time, he clearly liked the animals. He cared for them. He had to know that most, if not all of them, would be killed if he released them. Terry Thompson appeared to be an aggressive and disagreeable high sensation seeker. He had a long history of criminality, even though he only went to prison one time. Terry despised authority and didn't want anyone telling him what to do. This mentality almost certainly extended to his relationship with his wife. He didn't want her to leave him, yet she did. This was unacceptable to him. From Terry's perspective, everything in his world was falling apart. He lost his marriage. He had a serious medical condition, which he may or may not have known about. He was in trouble financially. He and his wife owed $56,000 in income tax to the IRS and $12,000 in property taxes to the county. He was resentful that he had to spend a year in home confinement. He wasn't sure how he could care for his animals and run a business if he was under home confinement. And he had been traumatized in Vietnam. I think Terry released all those animals with the intent of them dying. He knew that this would make everybody suffer as he had suffered. He wanted everybody to experience his pain. The loss of the animals would force everyone to acknowledge how much Terry had been dealing with. It would also hurt his wife specifically. She loved the animals. And that way, Terry was simply trying to get revenge. What about the behavior of the police in this case? The police have been heavily criticized for shooting the animals. Some have suggested they were cowardly, lazy, frightened, and trigger happy. Others say the police simply didn't have enough training or the right training. After all, 
Who would think that a police officer would ever have to confront a group of tigers or lions? The way the police tell the story, they should be congratulated as heroes. They saved the community from these violent, exotic animals that were going to undoubtedly attack and kill people. They talked about how there was an apartment complex nearby where children were playing. There was this theory that because Terry Thompson had cut the cages, there was nothing the police could do. They couldn't return the animals to the cages because they would simply get out again. What's the truth? Did the police have to kill all those animals? There are two important points to consider with this question. What the police should have done if they had perfect knowledge, and what they should have done based on the information, training, and resources that they had available to them in the moment. I think there's no question that some of the animals could have been safely captured. One civilian witness had some interesting observations about the day of the incident. According to this witness, only three of the cages were cut. He was on the scene and simply put some of the animals back in the cages. He claimed the police shot some of the animals when they were still inside the cages. He repeatedly asked the police if he could be allowed to collect some of the animals. He knows he could have done it safely. The police said they don't know anything about this witness. There were no reports of anyone like that being on the scene. They deny wrongdoing. Even if that witness was lying, it seems clear the police could have captured some of the animals. But based on what the police knew at that time, I can understand their concerns. It was the uncertainty and chaos of the situation that made it so dangerous. They did not know how to use tranquilizer darts. Even if they did, the drugs take 15 to 20 minutes to work. That's plenty of time for a tiger, lion, or other animal to kill someone. If one person had been hurt or killed by one of the escaped animals, people would have criticized the police for causing that death. I think the police were in a no-win situation. They decided to go with a strategy that maximized their ability to protect human beings. I think the real blame in this case falls on Terry Thompson. He's the one who caused the death of the exotic animals in an effort to show the world the depth of his pain and anger. Those are my thoughts on the case of Terry Thompson. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.